So there are several reasons why seeker deer do better than native red and roe deer. And those go right through the life cycle from breeding when they produce more young to feeding when they do better on poor feeding resources and at higher densities than other species to competing in the, in the rut so they're more likely to breed successfully and then to evading the cull, hiding in dense habitats, dense conifer plantations. And so we estimate it takes around four times as long to successfully stalk and cull a seeker deer as it does a red or roe deer. This paper comes from decades of observations and experience that our deer stalkers have, and also from our recent data that we've been recording on where deer are browsing, the damage they're causing, and where they're being culled. And so we're combining long-term direct experience with the latest scientific research and observational methods. Commercial conifer plantations, other types of native woodland, peatland, grassland, pasture areas are all impacted on by these growing populations of a non-native invasive species. What we're hoping for from government is more official, high-profile recognition of seeker deer as a really damaging invasive non-native species that does need to be controlled. And we're hoping that will come through official recognition, public awareness campaigns, um, through support for deer managers to invest the time and resources that are needed to control seeker populations, and through encouraging targeted culls to stop the spread of seeker deer and to gradually shrink their range again so that native species can once again dominate in these landscapes.